there's been a lot of talk about whether criminals in D.C. are actually held accountable. Tonight, the U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia is firing back against claims that his office doesn't do enough to prosecute people. Our chief investigative reporter Eric Flack spoke with him just about an hour ago. And Eric, he told you that the prosecution rates that he's being criticized for don't tell the full story. Yeah, Les, and this story has a lot of layers. We're going to break it all down for you. We did meet with the U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia at his offices here in South uh, Northwest D.C. late this afternoon. He told us these prosecution rates that he is under fire for are not as bad as they might look. Under fire for prosecution rates that dropped to 33% last year, U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia Matthew Graves said those numbers are on the rise now, hitting a 53% prosecution rate in the fourth quarter of this year. But that's still well below prosecution rates from 2017. So you are saying this was intentional to bring down those prosecution numbers? Some percentage decrease was uh, intentional to it was intentional to find cases that were fundamentally flawed and a necessary consequence of that would be there would be some percentage decrease. Some of the decrease that we saw in fiscal years 21 and fiscal years 22 was very much not intentional. Graves blamed the impact of DC's Department of Forensic Science losing its accreditation, making it incredibly hard to test evidence his prosecutors need for trial. Graves said his office has now found stopgap measures to increase evidence testing. DC is a crime problem. You say your office is not the problem. What is the problem? We must do everything we can to vigorously prosecute crime, particularly the violent crime that is currently plaguing our community, and we are doing that. Prosecution, though, is necessary, but not sufficient. As for the reasons his office don't prosecute crimes, it's most often because witnesses don't want to cooperate, followed by a lack of evidence, or the defendant having a reasonable justification like self-defense. Seven percent of cases the U.S. Attorney's Office decides not to prosecute are at the discretion of prosecutors, likely because they decided the crime wasn't that serious and or the defendant lacked a criminal history. We're doing everything we can in our lane to, att to attack the crisis that we're seeing. But it bothers you? The criticism bothers you? I don't focus on the criticism. I'm more worried about what is happening on our streets. We also asked Graves about that epidemic of underage crime going on in D.C. right now. He says prosecutors have a tough choice about whether or not to charge a juvenile as an adult. Was this a pattern of repeated dangerous behavior or was it just a bad decision by a teenager? But he didn't have any data for us to kind of analyze how they break down those very difficult decisions. More to come as this story develops. Live in Northwest tonight, Eric Flack, WUSA 9. Back to you. All right, Eric, thank you for the information. We appreciate it.